In today's video, I'm talking about how I filter water, specifically using the LifeStraw Peak Series Collapsible Water Filter. Now, I like this because it's so versatile. You can use so many different ways. For starters, you can unscrew this and fill it up with water and actually use it as a water bottle on the go. I prefer not to use it that way though, but it is an option. Another way is removing the filter from here and actually using it as a life straw from whatever water source you have. Again, the option's there, but that's not the way I like to use it. I like to filter it and transfer it into another bottle. So I'm gonna show you how you do that. Now that we fill this bottle, screw this back on. You may have noticed that I transferred the filter from the back to the front. You can use it both ways, but this way you actually empty the entire content of the pouch. So, here we go. By the way, this is the most important part. I always empty a few, maybe half of it. And I'll explain why later. Also, I do prefer to pour it at an angle like this. The reason being is if you have any contaminated water on the bottle itself, if you're pouring like this, right above it, water off the bottle might go into your water source. This way, still not perfect, but better than nothing. So let me get this filled up. It might take about three of these. So you saw with the filter on the outside, two of these, including the initial flush, which I'll, which I'll talk about now, was enough to fill the one liter bottle. When I did start using this, I would put the filter inside and use it that way, and it would take me about three or four bottles to fill up the one liter. So use it the right way, fills it up in two shots, it's actually really fast, and talk about the maintenance on the filter now. Really, really exciting stuff. taste bad either. Sometimes it does, so depending where you get your water from, it is a bit questionable tasting. I do like to add some kind of sport drink or electrolyte mix in there. Here's the filter itself. It's good for 500 gallons or 2,000 liters. Now I know it's not a perfect conversion, but that's what the life straw says. So it should stop flowing when it gets to that point. Now I've been using this for about almost two years now, and I've met maybe, maybe 50 gallons worth. So I think I'll replace this filtering system way before this filter is actually due. And it's fairly priced too. I think it's about the same cost. It's about half the cost of the whole filter assembly itself, which is kind of reasonable. And now I'm going to show you how to backwash and how to store this filter. Again, this is the filter, very exciting. It's play with a plunger. This screws onto the filter, put it on tight, take out the plunger. Fill that with clean water. Usually I do this when I get home from a trip. But you can do it on the field if the water you're using is very dirty. Put the plunger in. Now what you want to do is get out the water that's in there. The unclean, the debris. Once is enough. Get all that stuff out of there. There you go. Now LifeStraw actually wants you to store it in a salt solution, which is just water and salt. I don't even measure it. I just put in somewhere between a quarter tablespoon to a, no, quarter teaspoon to half teaspoon of salt. And then they want you to actually suction in some of the solution and then let it set in there. I don't do the suctioning part. I just take it, take the filter itself. You can use a container. I use a Ziploc bag because I just like how it stores better. I just take the filter, throw it in there. Make sure the water level is high enough to submerge the whole filter itself and that's it, I leave it there. Sometimes I take it out after a couple weeks, couple months, and still good to go. Now, when you saw me flush out a little bit of the water earlier, this is exactly why. This is salty water, and you don't want the first bit of your water that you're drinking just to taste like salt. So that's why, always flush out, maybe, honestly, maybe half of it if, if you really want to be, be safe. I've always used it to filter my water, but in case it doesn't work, I forget it, it breaks, something happens, I always like to keep these as a backup. 
Now, I've never used these before. I've never had to use these before. I did use them in preparation for this video, just so I can see how they work before I'm doing a video on them. They take up no space and it's just a safety in case, like I said, in case the filter breaks for whatever reason or stops working or clogs up, I don't know. It's always good to have these. As you can see, it's quite small. If your water is clear, you can use one. If it's a bit dirtier, they say use two. For the sake of this video, I'm using the same water that I just filtered before. I'm just using it for demonstration. So in this case, it is pretty clear. I'm gonna use one. Shake it up and then you let it sit for, I believe, half an hour. And there you have it, safe drinking water. So it took about five minutes for it to dissolve. I may have mentioned that. But I did let it sit for 30 minutes and doesn't change the taste to it. Like I said, you might want to add some of this depending where you get your water from. I have drank water before that was like it clearly tasted like I was drinking from a lake but it was safe to drink so cheers. Now the filter itself doesn't work below zero degrees which is 32 Fahrenheit below freezing basically. In fact freezing the filter can actually damage it so if you're out in those temperatures or at night it gets down low keep that filter somewhere next to you so it won't freeze. And these aqua tabs are only good at down until 4 degrees Celsius, which is 40 Fahrenheit, more or less. When you get to that temperature here in Canada, at least, we have snow available, which I obviously can't show you right now. But it's as simple as scraping off the top layer of snow to get all the debris and whatnot that's on the top. Get some nice clean snow. Melt it. And the only tip I can really give is... If you have a little bit of water, add water to that pot before you start boiling it. It's going to make the boil time so much quicker. And I don't really know the, like the science behind it. I mean, logically, the water will boil and the steam will circulate between all those little snow particles and help it melt faster. So those are the only tips I can give you for snow. That's it. That's why I filter my water. Not the most exciting subject, but it is very important. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.